great day, grade 4 students. Once again, welcome to our scientific class with Miss Shara. Let us start our day with a work plan. We're going to have science bits, finding Nemo, discussion, and where were you? Our science bits, let us watch this short video. So from the short video, what do you think? What's Mars surface looks like to you? For me, it looks hope that if we can find ways to visit Mars, we also have the potential to transform life here on Earth, as well as humanity. No matter where we go from here, we have this moment to define what matters to us as individuals and as a species. COVID-19 is forcing us to build windmills and harness the winds of change. Are you ready to build a windmill to power your future? Okay, I know you're ready. So COVID-19 is bringing us face to face with a host of uncertainties, pressures, and yes, catastrophes. But if we have the patience and courage to learn from these experiences, we empower ourselves to build stronger, inclusive, and resilient futures on Earth and even Mars. So what would life on Mars be like? Millions of us are getting a taste of it as the Project Perseverance is landing on Mars. So Mars Project is a project maybe they are hoping to find lives or living things in Mars and how people can survive in Mars. So how are we going to interact with living things if there is there in Mars? But let's go back to Earth first and let us study our own living things. Okay, so... Let me read our learning target for today. I can describe some types of beneficial and harmful interactions among all living things in the environment. Have you watched the movie Finding Nemo? Right, so where is Nemo? The father of Nemo is looking for him everywhere. And look at the picture. Where is Nemo here? Yeah, Nemo is hiding in the sea anemone. So what is the relationship between Nemo and the sea anemone? So the sea anemone and Nemo live together in a type of relationship where both of them benefits from the other. So Nemo cleans the tentacles of the animal. Okay, draws in prey, keeps predatory fish away because it's swimming, and provides moving water, and offers nitrogen that the animal needs. In return, the sea animal serves as the hiding place of Nemo, as his habitat, habitat right, to be safe. Right, so what do you call that relationship between the sea anemone and Nemo? We call that as interactions among living things. So they interact with each other. What do you mean by interactions? Interaction means two or more things or organisms have an effect upon one another. Do you... Have you heard the saying, no man is an island? This saying is also true for organisms in an ecosystem. No organism exists in isolation. 
individual organisms live together in an ecosystem and depend on one another. In fact, they have many different types of interactions with each other. And many of these interactions are critical for their survival. Why do you think it is important to interact between species in our ecosystem? We have discussed about food chains and food webs. So one of the importance of biological interaction is that it maintains the food web. So the transfer of energy from one species to another. Now let's look at the interaction within ecosystem, right? So since most species occur within ecological communities, these interactions can be affected by and indirectly influence other species and their interactions. The interaction among organisms within or between overlapping niches can be beneficial or harmful. The environment can be organized into five levels. Biome is the region with similar climate, types of plants, and animals. Second level is ecosystem. So this is consists of the living and non-living things that interact in one environment. Now we have community. Community is a group or association of populations of two or more different species occupying the same geographical area at the same time. Next we have population. Population is a group of organisms of the same species that live in the same area. Then we have the organisms. An individual organisms live together in an ecosystem and depend on one another. Some organisms can make their own food and other organisms have to get their food by eating other organisms. An organism that must obtain their nutrients by eating other organisms is called a consumer. Organism that can produce their own food is called producer. So an organism is an individual living thing. An organism refers to a living thing that has an organized structure and can react to stimuli, reprodu reproduce, grow, adapt, and maintain homeostasis, so balance in the environment. So this one is a single cell organism. So what are the types of interactions among living things? Interactions between organisms that has to do with close, usually long-term interactions between different types of organisms are called symbiosis. The impacts of symbiosis can be positive, negative, or neutral for the individuals involved. So survival of one species might depend on another species. So symbiosis is the first type of interactions among living things. So it can be classified into three. First is both species benefit. Second, one species benefits while the other is not affected. And one species benefits while the other is harmed. So what are these types of symbiosis? The first one is mutualism. You might think that if a bird landed in the mouth of a crocodile, the reptile would eat it. Well, not the Egyptian plover bird. Egyptian plovers and crocodiles have a unique symbiotic relationship. 
because crocodiles cannot use dental floss, they get food stuck in their teeth. So this cleans the crocodile's teeth or the bird cleans the crocodile's teeth and keeps his mouth fresh and free from infections. And then the plover bird gets her food and the crocodile gets his mouth clean. So often, organisms provide resources or services to each other. The interaction is mutually beneficial. So the crocodile is happy and the plover bird is happy. So this is a win-win relationship and it is known as mutualism. So what is mutualism? Mutualisms are two species interacting with each other that benefits both species. So let's see the examples of mutualism. So the first one is the digestive bacteria and humans. Inside our bodies is what we call good bacteria. Okay, so we have bacteria inside our tummy. So this good bacteria aids in digesting the food we take. There are foods that are not entirely digested, so the bacteria feeds on what's left of the food. The next example is spider, crab, and algae. Spider crab spends their time in a few of the most shallow areas of the sea. So the algae on their backs serves as the camouflage to hide the crabs from the predators. Another example is the ants and fungus. Ants make fungus from the leaves and their feces. When the fungus grows, the ants eat them in order to live. Another example is the termites and the protozoa. The, proto the protozoa serves as the termites digestive bacteria. So they have good bacteria also which aids them to digest food that they eat. So the protozoa is the good bacteria inside the termites tummy. And then this one, the white flower, is the yucca plant. And then the one that is pointed by the arrow is the yucca moth. The moth aids in pollinating the plant. The plant, in return, serves as nest for the moth's eggs. And then the last example for now is the nitrogen-fixing bacteria and legumes. These bacteria live in the legume's root hair where they transform nitrogen to ammonia, which is needed for the plants to grow and develop. Look at this. This is a jellyfish. Some fish are immune to, to the sting of a jellyfish. If us humans are running away from jellyfish, but there are some fishes that they can uh, go near the jellyfish. So they can take shelter among the jellyfish tentacles. Ayan. So they can go around and hide from their predator. So they are benefiting from it. While the, the jellyfish is not affected. So you call that as commensalism. In commensalism, two species have a long-term interaction that is beneficial to one and has no positive or negative effect on the other. And the other one is happy and the other is not affected. Right. So the commensal relation is often between a larger host and a smaller commensal. So the host organism is essentially unchanged by the interaction, whereas the commensal species may show great morphological adaptation. So they are growing because they are hiding or benefiting from the host or commensal. Example of commensalism is the remora that rides attached to sharks and other fishes. 
Femoras have on the top of their heads a flat oval sucking disc structure that adheres to the bodies of their hosts. So remoras eat scraps of prey dropped by the shark. And then the shark is not affected nor harmed. In the case of barnacles and whales, only the barnacles benefit from attaching to the whales, but at no biological cost to the whale. Attaching to the whales gives the barnacles a stable place to live, a free ride and access to plenty of food. But maybe if there's a lot of barnacles already attaching to the whale's tail or body, it will give a at least a heavy burden on his back. So he may be a bit affected, but that will happen if uh, in the long run. No? But for look at this picture, just a few, so they are not affected nor harmed. So it's an example of commensalism. Symbiotic relationships are not always positive for both participants. Sometimes there are definite loser. So this is what we call parasitism. So there is a parasite from the word parasitism. The parasite is the one that is happy. And then the other one is the host. So the host is harm. So if one organism is happy or benefiting and the other is harmed, is it, it is called parasitism. So we have a host and a parasite. In parasitism, the parasite does not usually kills its host, but just feeds on it for a long time. So look at that, it could be hospitalized first. Okay, while it is living. The two species interacting wherein one species benefits and the host species is harmed. Look at this example, the mistletoe and the tree. So what happens to the trees where it is attached to? It's drying out. And look at this, the dog and the ticks. The ticks is full of blood well, while the dog, look at that, there's a wound, no? Ayan. So the parasite sticks or stay in the host body while it is still alive. And it dies, the parasite will go away. Ayan. So what happens with the host? Will die. So what can you do so that this organism will not harm you or not harm humans or animals or plants? Right? For us humans, we can drink clean water. Yan. Stay away from cat litter and feces of animals. Wash your hands often, especially after contact with contaminated food, water, and feces. Cook your food properly at the recommended temperature and practice, practice cleanliness and good hygiene. And that way, we can avoid these parasites. We discussed three types of symbiosis today. The first one is happy, happy. Both are benefiting. So it's called mutual, mutualism. Happy, not affected. One is happy, one is benefiting. The other one is not affected nor harm. It is called commensalism. Happy or benefiting. And the other is harm. So we have the parasitism. So we have a parasite and a host. So mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism are three types of symbiosis. Right, let's continue. So organisms interact in different ways. Organisms may cooperate, compete, or depend on each other for survival. Let's talk more about how organism interacts with each other. Of all the species in the world, the largest and most dangerous is the saltwater crocodile. 
These ferocious killers can grow up to 23 feet in length, weigh more than a ton, and are known to kill hundreds each year, with crocodiles as a whole responsible for more human fatalities annually than sharks. Next is the white sharks. Okay, so the number one predator in the world is the great white sharks, perhaps the most feared predator in the world. Okay, great white shark truly is the king of the ocean and thanks to movies such as Jaws, is generally feared and even hated by humans. Who, what do you call this uh, animals, they are predators. Okay? So the next interaction is predation. Predation is the relationship between a predator and a prey. So between the strong and the weak. So we, we have this saying, the survival of the fittest. So why do you think predation is important? Predators are important part of a healthy ecosystem. Predators remove vulnerable prey, such as the old, injured, sick, or very young, giving more food for the survival and success of healthy prey animals. Also, by controlling the size of prey populations, predators help slow down the spread of disease. So they are... Uh, important predator and prey relationship or predation seems brutal because look at that the lion is eating the rabbit but that is the reality of life that's why we have food chain and food web uh, eat or be eaten so this is another example of a predator prey relationship look at the rabbits okay All right, so the next interaction, or the third interaction among living things is correct. The winner is, there is a winner if there is a competition. So competition is the third interaction. Competition is a struggle between individuals or different population for unlimited resources. Competition can happen with the same species. Okay, so the, like, like plants compete for light, space, and nutrients. All right, there are two types of competition. We called it as intra-specific competition. So if you will look at the picture, they are of the same species. So intra-specific means the same species. species. So, intraspecific competition occurs when the two or more individuals of the same species simultaneously demand use of a limited resource. So, from the word intra, so that means within, no? competition within the same species of organism. So, they usually fight for the resources like food, water, and land habitat and that enables them to survive and then we have the inter-specific competition so competition between different species like this one oh, hyenas and vultures compete for remains of dead animals so inter-specific competition refers to the competition between species for shared resources such as space and food. So when we say inter-between, so competition between different species of organisms. Predation and competitions, right? It population change over time. Population grow and decline. Birth rate may decline or increase. So if you will look at the picture, predator as wolf population increases, 
the most population decreases. So, prey interaction can affect population increase or decrease. So, the predator and prey relationship and the competition relationship or interaction can affect the number of population. It can either decrease or increase. The fourth interaction is cooperation. Cooperation exists not only in humans, but in other animals as well. Some organisms work together to benefit each other. Different animal species help each other hunt, clean, and protect themselves from predators. Killer whales hunt in pods or in groups. Ants, bees, and termites Members of colony have different roles and responsibilities. And these are very good examples. So the ants and the penguins are good in cooperation relationship. So how about us humans? How are we going to show cooperation relationships? So examples of cooperation include sharing your toys, materials, or personal belongings with another person, your siblings, or your family. Cordially working together with the members of the family, with your classmates, with everyone. To create a presentation or some things like in the breakout room, yeah, and you cooperate with each other. If you're going to do uh, something like the Eco Bricks, no? Eco Bricks project, let's cooperate with each other. Let's help each other uh, make an Eco Brick so that we can help in making a house. So agreeing to compromise when a conflict or disagreement arises, especially when you are in the breakout room, you have different opinions and ideas so when you agree with each other's opinions you are cooperating with each other because the activity is to talk and uh, know each other better Ayan. so when disagreement arises you can talk it out politely and calmly so we work together we cooperate together in order for us to survive Okay, to have a better life. Okay, so which interactions are beneficial? Of course, we have the Simba uh, mutualism and cooperation. These are beneficial when everyone is benefiting. So how do you have positive interactions with others? Positive interactions are cooperative relationship between species that result in better growth, reproduction, and survival for at least one species involved in the interaction without negatively affecting the other species. And so let's model a positive ways of relating to others. Let us show respect and care for others. Even people you don't like or disagree with, let us learn how to be polite and respectful. Express anger or negative emotions in constructive ways. So let us have or learn how to self-reflect. If you are having conflict with your classmates or with your siblings or with your family, use it as a learning opportunity. Avoid behaving aggressively and handle discipline fairly. So if your attention is being called, then accept it, okay? And learn the positive interaction with others. All right. So question is, what are the different harmful interactions among living things? So everyone wants essentially the same thing in life, and that is to exist, to survive and flourish. So living a long and fruitful life is a difficult thing to do when a person can't coexist with other people in harmony, even in the animals. So that is where harmful interaction begins. 
right? So being nice to others as a daily principle of life, such as smiling and wavy, ayan, you say hello, ayan. Treating people are the same way, treating people the same way we want them to treat us. If someone is mean to people, then be nice to them, okay? Because you want other people to be nice to you. So they better expect, you better expect, right? We better expect the same from others. So uh, let's, let us give love, okay? Of course, uh, there are some things that we cannot avoid, like uh, there are uh, relationship or interactions, like parasitism, ayan, competition, ayan. Okay, those are harmful interactions among living things. Competition is an interesting example of interactions. When two organisms compete or fight, that's okay if it's fight if the fight is fair. But if the limit, if the sources is limited, such as food, shelter, a mate, or sunlight, there is usually a winner and a loser. But if the competitors fight literally to the death and kill each other, then competition is harmful. Ayan, it, it becomes negative. Wow, oh, another scientific day. So, did we reach our learning target for today? Did we describe some types of beneficial or harmful interaction among living things in the environment? Yes, we did, right? So, in summary, there are many different kinds of interactions between organisms in an ecosystem. And it is not unusual for any particular organism to wear many hats and play multiple roles at different times. For example, we humans are consumers and predators when we hunt or kill and eat other animals, such as a fish or a deer. Or when we eat chicken, we have purchased at the grocery store or at a restaurant. We also have many mutualistic relationships with other organisms, such as our pets. Competition also occurs between humans for resources, even mates. Interactions between organisms, including humans, are the nature of life and have tremendous impact on the functioning and health of ecosystem. So once again, this is squad with Miss Shara, a scientific day, grade four students. So if you have any question, please feel free to message me.